guys, Dirk here from Chef Sarah De Hero. I hope everyone is well and ready to get your cook on uh, because today I'm going to be sharing with you guys a very special seafood pasta dish using one of my favorite ingredients. This little bad boy right here. So this is a uh, southern rock lobster and I love cooking with lobster uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it's extremely versatile. Um, you can make so many great dishes um, using this. Uh, two, it just presents really well. I mean, just look at the color and um, yeah, just when, when you present this on a plate, it's, it's amazing. People are always impressed by that. But most importantly, these guys are delicious. Um, you really can't go past a freshly cooked lobster. Uh, so I'm going to be showing you how to make a very simple, very easy um, yeah, lobster pasta dish that I promise will impress any seafood uh, lover out there. All right, so I think that's, that's about it. The... Oh, right, okay. So, I'm also gonna be showing you guys how to make one of these. So this is called a Blue Lagoon cocktail. And, uh, so good. <clears throat> and the reason why I'm gonna be showing you that is um, a lot of my friends always ask me, you know, Dirk, what can I pair, um, you know, this dish with a particular drink? And most people think of um, pairing food with wine. And absolutely, that works <clears throat> really well. Um, there are some amazing wines out there that really complement ingredients and particular, um, particular dishes. Uh, for example, you, if you've got a beautiful steak and nice deep red wine, um, works well. But for me personally, I love cocktails you know, my beers and just other drinks as well. So I wanted to show you guys, um, yeah, this particular drink, the Blue Lagoon, because that goes really well with uh, this particular lobster pasta dish. So at the end of the video, I'll show you guys this. Um, just a little bit of a warning, this drink packs a serious punch, so go easy on that um, yeah I've already had three if you can't tell uh, yeah but do as I say not as I do <laughs> okay uh, but I think that's that's about it so we're ready to start cooking okay guys so to make this dish uh, we're gonna need the following set of ingredients that I've got laid out here uh, look it's it's pretty simple uh, firstly, obviously we need our beautiful lobster because that's the hero of the dish. Uh, then we're going to need some fresh pasta. Uh, today I'm going to be using fettuccine and I get this from my uh, local Italian shop just down the road. They have some amazing pasta and just freshly made uh, sauces. Uh, so we're also going to need a nice deep rich uh, marinara sauce. So if you can get that freshly made, that's always preferable. Uh, apart from that, we're going to need uh, some good heavy cooking cream. Uh, about one cup of fish stock. Uh, a few chilies. About eight cubes of butter. Uh, about one cup of cherry tomatoes cut in half. Uh, we're going to need two garlic cloves. About one cup of spring onion. Uh, we're going to need some chives and a few sprigs of thyme. And then finally, we're going to need some olive oil and salt and pepper. And that's basically it. Uh, so I will put all these ingredients in the description of the video for you guys. Uh, but essentially, that is all we need to make this pasta dish. Okay guys, so the first thing that we're going to do is um, get our lobster prepped and de-shelled. 
Now, when it comes to lobster, there are a couple of options. Uh, for me personally, my local seafood market has um, amazing uh, fresh, uh, live, raw, and cooked um, lobster every single day. So depending on my time frame, I'll pick one of those options. Uh, if I'm short on time, I will buy one of their freshly cooked lobsters. It's just much easier. Um, they do a great job of cooking it, um, you know, cutting it in half and cleaning it out. Uh, if I have the time, I do like to uh, prep and cook my own uh, live lobsters. Um, but look, that's really, again, depends on time and just a personal preference. Um, but these guys do a really great job. So this little guy here has uh, already been cooked um, and cut in half and cleaned. And I'm going to use these uh, tools here to, to get all the meat out. So I'm just going to take this rubber band off. And like I said, wow, look at that. Beautiful. Um, really nicely uh, cooked, as you can see. Um, all that beautiful lobster meat. Um, they've cleaned this out really well and uh, deveined uh, the lobster as well, which is uh, very important. And yeah, this is, you know, ready to go. So um, the next step is, like I said, we're going to take all the beautiful lobster meat out of the shell. And it's very important that we get every ounce of meat out of the shell and out of the uh, legs as well and then we'll be ready to move on to the pasta okay guys so the next step actually the next step is uh i'm gonna have just a little sip of this uh beautiful blue lagoon cocktail i really can't wait for you guys to to try that it's amazing uh, but with the lobster, we're going to take a very sharp knife and we're just going to gently start to um, pierce the back of the shell. So we're not cutting into the meat. All we're doing is going between the meat and the shell to loosen that amazing lobster meat. Uh, and you'll start to feel it give way. So we do that around the back of the shell, and then we're also going to do this um, down the middle of the lobster, just very gently, just to loosen this up, and then at the top of the lobster as well. Now, once we've done that, now you're going to have to use your fingers here, but um, just crack the shell a little bit, and you start at the very... Um, end of the tail and just start pulling that meat apart. We want to try and get this out in one go. Once you get about two thirds of the way through, it should come apart very easily. Yeah, just, just like that. And then just gently keep pulling it apart. And there we go. Beautiful. That is exactly what what we want to get one nice big piece of uh of the lobster meat just uh kind of clean that up a little bit and that looks amazing all right excellent now with the shell there's still a lot more um a lot more meat uh still here in the shell so you're gonna have to just start um, breaking it apart a little bit especially around this uh, the top end so just uh, crack the shell with your hands um, and just start pulling out um, all all that beautiful lobster meat that's still in there okay so now that we've extracted all of that meat from the body of the shells I'm just going to show you guys a very simple, easy trick to um, uh, getting all the meat out of the legs. So this is really quite simple. Uh, so take take one of the legs, as you can see here. 
Now what you want to do is where this joint is, what we're going to do is snap against the joint. So just like that, and it'll come apart really easy. Uh, that part there is just cartilage, so we don't want that. And now I'm going to show you how we get the meat out of this little leg right here. Now you could use a crab claw if you want to, but it's not necessary. And I prefer to use a rolling pin. So all we're going to do here, and I hope you guys can see this clearly, but all we're going to do is take the rolling pin, crack the leg and start rolling and pushing the meat out of out the top. So as you can see, the meat is starting to come out and you just apply some pressure up and just keep rolling. And you'll feel the meat coming out the top. So just like that. Just do that a few times and that's it. Perfect. Uh, just have a look at that. Beautiful. So that is the meat from, from this little part of the leg. So go ahead and do that for the rest of the legs and you'll see just how much um, uh, lobster meat there is. Okay guys, so I've taken all the meat out of the legs and I just quickly wanted to show you exactly how much meat you can extract from the lobster legs. I mean, just take a look at that. Um, definitely worth the effort. And this uh, lobster meat that's in the legs is buttery. It's got a real beautiful light sweetness to it. So like I said, definitely worth the effort. Um, so yeah, all we're going to do now is set this aside and then we're going to get started on the rest of the dish. Okay guys, so the next step is to get our pasta going. So all we're going to do is bring a pot of water up to the boil with uh, a little bit of salt. We're going to grab our beautiful fettuccine pasta and we're just going to gently place this into, um, into the boiling water. Just like that. Okay, perfect. Now, just let that sit there for about uh, 10 to 15 seconds. The idea is we don't want to break the strands. So just um, after about 15 seconds, you'll see it start to kind of melt into the water. And then all we're going to do is grab uh, a pair of tongs. And once that is nicely start starting to settle in, we're just going to use our tongs, gently grab around the side, twist, and put that into the rest of the water. Perfect. That's it. Uh, that will make sure that the strands of pasta don't break, which is very important. We're going to let this cook for 11 minutes and then that will be perfectly cooked. Okay guys, so the next step is to um, start making our beautiful deep rich uh, sauce that's going to go with this dish. So all I've done here is uh, got our pan onto a medium high heat with some olive oil. And once the pan uh, is starting to smoke, we want to we want to get that sizzle uh, going. So just testing that out with a little bit of spring onion. And that looks good. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to add uh, is our cup of spring onion. So just pour that in. Make sure you get all of, all of that spring onion in there. Love that fragrance that you get from the spring onion. Uh, and then the next uh, ingredient we're going to add is the our chili, our chopped chili. 
Now you can use chili flakes if you want to. I prefer to use an actual chili. Um, so just pour that in there as well. Just give that a little bit of a shake and those flavors will just start to start to cook and it just smells amazing. And then finally at this stage I'm just going to add our uh, two garlic cloves. So these are just two crushed garlic cloves. I'm going to add that in now. Give this a little bit of a stir through and just let it cook for about about a minute. That's all it needs. Okay, so this has been on the heat now for just a little over one minute. And all we're gonna do now is add our sprigs of thyme uh, to the pan. So just gently start pulling away uh, the leaves. Try not to get the stems uh, into the pan if you can. Um, this adds such a great depth of flavor to the sauce. So take the thyme, just break it apart, add that to the pan and then we're going to cook this for another minute. Okay guys, so this has just been uh, cooking for a little over one minute and it smells amazing. So all we're going to do now is just add a little bit of butter uh, to the pan. Uh, about five cubes uh, should be what we need. Uh, now it's very important that we keep this on a very low heat because we do not want the butter to burn. We just want this to nicely melt through with the spring onion, chilies, and, um, and the garlic. So on a very low heat, let this kind of uh, simmer for about another two minutes. Okay, so it's just been a little over two minutes and the butter is nicely melted into the ingredients. So we're just going to grab our one cup of fish stock and add that to the pan, just like that. Beautiful. Now we're going to bring this up to a medium to high heat. And we're going to let this cook for another two minutes. Now the only other thing we're going to do is add a little bit of salt to the pan and then also uh, a touch of uh, freshly ground pepper as well. Really brings out the flavor of the spring onions, the chili, the garlic, uh, the butter, exactly what we want. So two more minutes, we're gonna let this cook on that medium to high heat, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so after about another two minutes, uh, the only thing we're gonna do now is add our beautiful, uh, rich uh, marinara sauce. Just add that to the pan. Uh, we're gonna keep this on medium to high heat and just nicely work that uh, sauce into the pan. Then we're just going to let that cook again for another two minutes. Okay, so guys, uh, just have a look at how amazing uh, the sauce is uh, now after adding the marinara um, to the pan. I mean, it just looks and smells um, incredible. So all we're gonna do now is um, add a little bit of our heavy cooking cream and our cherry tomatoes. We're gonna keep this on a really low heat and just mix that through for about another minute.
Okay, so once the uh, cream and the cherry tomatoes are nicely mixed through, we're just going to add uh, the rest of our butter and keep this on a low heat and stir that through as well. Uh, the butter will just give the sauce a really um, uh, beautiful, like glossy uh, finish and just adds a little bit more richness to the sauce. So that should just take about another minute. And then we're going to add our lobster and the actual pasta. Okay guys, so once the butter is nicely melted in, all we're going to do is take our beautiful cooked uh, lobster meat and we're just going to add this to the pan. Now it's very important that we keep this on a very very low heat because we don't want uh, the lobster to uh, keep cooking. It's already been cooked and if it keeps cooking it's going to become uh, very tough and very chewy which is absolutely not what we want. So all we want to do is just cover the lobster in this beautiful sauce. This should only take about 30 seconds. And then we're going to add uh, the pasta to the pan. Okay guys, so all I've done here uh, for the final step is added our beautiful fettuccine pasta to the pan. And we're just going to nicely combine this all together. And just make sure you mix all of that sauce and the lobster through the pasta. Uh, it takes about 10 seconds. And then we are ready to plate up the dish. Okay, so the dish is done. And the only other thing that I've done here is added some freshly chopped chives. And uh, some salmon roe. Now, that is just purely a personal preference. Um, for me, I like salmon roe. I think it gives a great contrast to the sweetness of the lobster. Um, but like I said, purely a personal preference. You don't need to do that. Um, but give it a shot because it is really, really nice. Um, the only other thing I'm going to show you guys now is the blue lagoon cocktail that goes with this dish and then we are ready to uh to have lunch okay guys so to make the blue lagoon cocktail is uh really very simple it just has uh four parts to it uh which is the butterscotch liqueur uh blue curacao and vodka and then finally top that off with some lemonade so all we're going to do is in a highball glass uh, full of ice, we're going to add uh, about 30 mils of the butterscotch. You can add a little bit more if you want, but roughly 30 mils. Uh, then we're going to take the, the blue curacao and add that as well. Again, about another 30 mils. Uh, I don't like to add too much of that because it is quite sweet. And then finally, uh, the vodka. Uh, for me, I generally add about 40 mils. I like to give it a bit of a kick. And then finally, um, just top that with uh, the lemonade. And that is it. That's all you need to do. Uh, there's no shaking or anything like that uh, for this drink. Just those four parts and we're good to go. All right guys, so that was the entire dish and I think we should definitely give this a taste and see how we did. Oh my God, that smells so good. Lobster, lobster as well.
Okay. Wow. That is amazing. Mm. Okay. So that combination with the sweetness. Sorry. Mm. That sweetness of the lobster with that deep, rich marinara sauce. Um, and then that hit of the chilies. And it's not overpowering, it's just enough to give like a really nice kick. With the chives and spring onion, and just that combination, it just all works. Wow. Love this dish. Mm. It goes really well with that Blue Lagoon cocktail. So that is lunch. Done. Alright. Um, look, I hope you guys like this recipe as well. If you do, uh, please like, share and subscribe. I'm going to finish this, but I'll be back real soon with another great recipe for you guys. Alright, enjoy. Enjoy.